Uh, very good evening to all. Uh, I'm the second last speaker, so I'll try to be as brief and interesting as possible. Uh, I'm Shannon, and um, my project and my presentation here concerns multiplicity distributions and the phenomenological application of Li Yang zeros to multiplicity distributions at high energy. And uh, my collaborators are Leong Chi Xiang, uh, Prof Chan, and Prof O from the uh, NUS. And uh, here's my uh, brief uh, presentation outline. Um, the multiplicities that I refer to here will be uh, the uh, final state hadron multiplicities from high energy collisions. Uh, in particular, I'm looking at proton-proton collisions at the uh, ISR energy up to CMS energy. So that's about 30 GeV to about 7 tera-electron volts. And uh, in the early days with uh, low energy collisions, uh, the multiplicity data was well described by a Poisson distribution. And uh, this is simple to understand and very easy. It only has a single parameter, the mean. Uh, the Poisson distribution also has the charming property that the mean and the variance are equal. Very charming, very simple. But nature is a little bit more subtle than that. And uh, we find that uh, Kova, Nielsen, and Olsen su suggested uh, this multiplicity distributions would follow a universal scaling law meaning that even with increasing energy, the multiplicity data, when scaled, would fall on a universal scaling curve. And this was known as a KNO scaling. But alas, while this was obeyed for lower energy collisions, this was not obeyed for high energy collisions. Furthermore, the uh, wider dispersion of high energy multiplicity data meant that uh, the Poisson became inadequate in describing the multiplicity data. And instead, the negative binomial distribution, the NBD, had to be used and set. And uh, it has two parameters, uh, mean multiplicity and R, the dispersion parameter. And uh, the NBD can be obtained from the uh, Poisson distribution. Uh, the variance, as you can see uh, from equation three, looks something like this. And in the limit where R is large, you obtain the mean and the variance are equal, just recovering the uh, Poisson case. Another distribution uh, that explains the uh, that describes the uh, higher energy multiplicity data is the uh, GMD, the generalized multiplicity distribution. And uh, it was obtained by uh, Chan and Xu. And uh, it has been shown to be a valid QCD solution to the stochastic branching equation. And notice that the three parameters, n bar, k, and k prime, which are physically motivated. Uh, here, n bar refers to the mean multiplicity, k to the average initial number of quarks, and k prime to the average initial number of gluons. The uh, generalized multiplicity distribution is general in the sense that uh, in the appropriate limits for k and k prime, we recover the uh, Poisson distribution and the uh, Fury Yule distribution used by Hua and the uh, negative binomial distribution. So, in this sense, the GMD can explain what the other distributions can and a little bit more. So, the uh, problem was that at high energies, at about 200 giga electron volts, at about the UAV range, uh, there was a formation of a sort of shoulder structure where the multiplicity data, instead of falling quickly, would taper off before falling. I'll show you this in the next slide. And in order to explain the formation of this uh, shoulder structure, it was suggested uh, that a two-component distribution would be able to describe the data well. Uh, for the purposes of this presentation, I'm using a two-component GMD distribution. So uh, you'll see something like this. A single component is inadequate in describing this multiplicity data simply because of this area where instead of falling off, the multiplicity data tapers off and then falls off. And uh, the solid blue line is the uh, two component distribution which describes the data. Uh, the component on the left in brown dashed lines is the, uh, so is the hard component. And the component that peaks towards the right, uh, the purple dashed lines is the uh, soft component. In this interpretation, the uh, hard component refers to head-on collisions, and sub-component refers to the uh, glancing collisions, so not head-on. Um, this work has also been uh, done by, with other distributions by other authors who have adopted a slightly different interpretation. They've used the uh, soft and semi-hard components, where soft refers to collisions that do not produce mini-jets, and semi-hard referring to collisions that do produce mini-jets. Mini-jets are defined as uh, groups of particles with transverse momentum, more than five giga electron volts. And uh, in the Liang phase transition, you can write the uh, grand canonical partition function like this, uh, where z is a complex variable. And uh, in practice, there's a maximum number of particles n that can be measured. And uh, so we truncate the grand canonical partition function at this n. And when we find the roots of this in the complex plane, it should look something like this. 
Notice that the roots here on the negative real axis, but in this region, in the positive real axis, it's devoid of roots. In the limit where n is large, you get something like this. There's a conversion of roots towards the positive real axis, and where that occurs, there is a phase transition. And uh, this approach was followed with some interest early on, but uh, fell out of favor. And uh, it was only in 1995, uh, with some work from uh, De Wolf, that interest in the, uh, this approach began to warm up again. So uh, here are some papers that uh, are directly relevant to this talk that apply the uh, uh, Li Yang zeros uh, in studying high energy multiplicity distributions. Uh, in fact, there was a, a paper just uploaded to archive, I think last week, uh, by a Japanese group studying the stability of Li Yang zeros in describing baryon net multiplicities. Uh, I have presented here the ISI energy range uh, Li Yang zeros. Notice that they are closed on the left and open on the right here, devoid of zeros. And with increasing energy at the next uh, energy range, UAV, uh, the UA5 range, you notice that there's a sort of conversion of zeros towards the positive real axis in uh, what appears to be a sort of ear structure. So if you imagine this is the face, the circle of the face, then this would be an ear. So it's a one-sided ear. And uh, this has also been observed in the previous work by uh, Dewanto et al. Now at subsequently high energies, you notice that the ear structure seems to have disappeared. So it appears that there's a sort of analogous Liang phase transition when we look at the uh, Liang zeros from ISI energies up to CMS energy. Um, here I present the uh, multiplicity data for the 2.36 TeV uh, at a pseudo rep, uh, absolute pseudo rapidity cut of 1.0. Uh, these are the parameters that uh, describe the data well. Uh, on the left in figure 14, I present the uh, Li Yang plot. And uh, on the right, I present the uh, HQ moment plot. Uh, the HQ moment is defined as the uh, ratio of the cumulant moment to the factorial moment. And the study of this was suggested by Dremin and later Dremin and Hua. But out of the interest of time, I would like to draw your attention to the uh, figure on the left, uh, the Li Yang plot. Once again, closed on the left. And on the right, you see a sort of ear structure at uh, eta 1.0. Now, if you look at the next eta cut, it appears that the ear structure has uh, disappeared. It's no longer obvious. And at subsequently larger eta cuts of 2.0 and the largest eta cut of 2.4, the ear structure is no longer noticeable. And again, for the case of uh, 7 TeV, there doesn't seem to be an ear structure at 1.0. Doesn't seem to be an ear structure at 1.5. Well, actually, if you, uh, if you have very good eyesight and a uh, very healthy imagination, you might be able to see some sort of ear structure here. But suffice to say, at increasing pseudo-rapidity cuts, the ear structure is no longer noticeable. It was earlier suggested that the uh, ear structure was associated with increasing energy. That is, when you increase energy from the CMS, from the ISR range up to the CMS range, the, uh, there will be a convergence of Liang zeros towards the positive real axis in the ear structure. Over here, we see that it is associated with the pseudo-rapidity cut. I also studied the uh, effects of truncation on the Li Yang zeros. And uh, for fixed energy and a fixed pseudo rapidity cut, for a low truncation cutoff for n is 25, the Li Yang plot looks something like this. At a larger, pseudo, uh, a larger truncation cutoff n, still no ear. But at a larger truncation yet still, you see a very obvious ear structure. Uh, the same for the eta 1.5 case for the same energy. No ear at n is 25, no ear at n is 50. At n is 150, again, for a large truncation, you see an ear. And uh, the same for 2.0, no ear, no ear, and again an ear. So uh, again, for the case of the largest pseudo repetitive cut, 2.4, no ears until the largest cutoff of n is 150. So what can we say? The ear structure, which was previously thought to be associated with energy, increasing energy, is also associated with pseudo-rapidity cut and also the truncation cut of N. And uh, in conclusion, we can say that the Liam plots evolved from an oval shape like uh, plot to a subtle shape with increasing energy. And there seems to be some sort of analogous Li Yang phase transition with the appearance of a non-trivial ear structure in the convergence of zeros to its positive real axis. The ear structure is associated with increasing energy, effects of truncation, and with pseudo-rapidity cut. 
And uh, it's exciting times now because the uh, LHC has just come up the uh, very long hibernation, and it's running its latest energies of 14 TeV. So it'll be interesting to study this again at higher energy. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Now that you say there are enormous many parts of data, so can you really get the full data? Because oh, that you, uh, usually they have all sorts of uh, you know constraints on the data. So, so how do you? Yes, we do. In fact, um, there are several constraints on the data. The first constraint is we don't know when we actually get a hit. Mm. So there are several levels to triggers in mm. triggering an event. Mm. Uh, there are hardware uh, triggers mm. to detect events and the higher level triggers, the uh, software triggers. But uh, out of the interest of time, uh, because the uh, triggers themselves are a very lengthy topic worth a lot of investigation. So out of the interest of time, I didn't present that. But suffice to say, uh, the uh, triggers we set, uh, the triggers that are set uh, are very exclusive. So we tend to miss out uh, some particle mm. that are produced. And yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, but, but Is that a problem for you, or? Uh, that shouldn't be a significant problem because uh, we include statistical error bars as well, so we can account for the uh, mm -hmm. uh, high-level trigger. My other question was, if you see some kind of phase transition, what should that indicate? Well, we suspect that this phase transition is associated with the uh, quark gluon plasma to hadron gas transition. Uh, the hadronization process, actually. But uh, it's still early days, so we're not entirely sure about that. We'll have to take more uh, detailed studies on the matter. Thank you very much for the question. Yeah, good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time.